Hello and welcome to the outside of my studio. In this video I'm going to show you how I made this picture. Separating the subject from the background can be an effective way to add emphasis to the foreground subject. This can be achieved in a number of ways. In this picture a combination of depth of field control with a mix of daylight and flash was used. And in this video I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. So the subject is going to be these flowers and the idea is that I'm going to try and separate those from all this as a background. But I still want to retain some of this because I think it will look quite interesting. So what I'm going to do is set up a camera about here somewhere. OK, so there we are. Uh, so I've set up the camera on this tripod. Uh, this is a medium format camera and on the front of the camera I have a 120mm lens. Uh, now that is going to give me the equivalent of about a 75mm uh, field of view on a full frame format camera. OK, so I'm just going to swing that round so that it's pointing vaguely in the right direction. Like so. And we'll just look through the viewfinder and set up the shot. So we'll just roughly focus that up. that and I'm just going to swing it round there I think that will do okay so with that in just about the right place what I'm going to do next is just use the exposure meter in the camera just to get uh, the ballpark exposure so you can see here the settings that I have on the camera it's in full manual mode at the moment I have a shutter speed of 1 125th of a second 100 ISO and an aperture of f16. So I don't want an aperture of f16. Uh, I think I want something like uh, f8. And I would like a shutter speed uh, around about there. So that looks about right to me. Maybe it wants to be a little quicker. We'll try it at about 1 60th. And with those I'll just grab an image and see what we get. OK, so you can see that with those settings it's a little overblown in the white parts of the image. So I think I'm going to take a stop off the exposure and also the focus needs adjusting. So I'm just going to change the aperture that will give me the stop that I need. There we go. And as for the focus, what I'm going to do is just use live view on the back of the camera here. So if I just instigate live view, like so. And then we'll just adjust the focus until that's good. There. Somewhere around there. Looks OK to me. OK, so with that now done, and we'll just grab another image and see what we get now. OK, yes, yeah, so that's looking a lot better. Uh, the exposure's OK. Uh, maybe wants to come up a little bit, maybe half a stop or something. Uh, but the focus is much, much better. So by setting that aperture, I've managed to uh, control the depth of field. Not forgetting this is a 120mm lens, so the depth of field is going to be relatively small anyway. So I've got enough detail in the background just to make the image come alive. Right, so the next thing to do would be to look at the exposure. Now, as it is at the moment, the exposure on the flowers here and the exposure on the background is basically the same. So what I want to do is darken down the background and maintain the exposure on the flowers. And the way I'm going to do that is by using some fill-in flash uh, just for the, uh, the flowers. So the first thing to do is to ascertain just what sort of exposure I need for the background. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to change the shutter speed so that instead of using 160th of a second, I'll take that up to, what shall we say, a thousandth of a second. So at that new setting I'll grab an image and we'll see what we get this time. So I think that's maybe a little too dark. So I just need to be somewhere in between. 
So what I'll do is just change that shutter speed from 1000 to 1 500th. So that's added a stop in effect. So with that done, I'll just grab that and we'll see what we get this time. Yes, I think that's brought it down just the right amount. OK, so now what I need to do is just supplement the light which is going onto the flowers with just a small amount of fill-in flash. There we are. So what I've got here is a very small uh, flash head and I'm just going to put a zoom reflector on that just to limit where it goes. You could easily do this with a, uh, a flash gun. You don't need a great deal of energy for this at all. So we'll just place that about there and just at an arbitrary energy level I'll just grab an image. Now I've set the shutter speed as you saw to 1 500th of a second. Now not many people will be able to uh, synchronize at that sort of speed. So you've got two choices. You can either use uh, high speed sync on the flash or you can use a leaf shutter in the lens. Now this lens does have a leaf shutter in it and that's what I'm going to do but you can easily do this with high speed sync. Okay, so let's just set that up. So I'll just tell the camera to use the leaf shutter. There we are. And you can see that I've got a flash symbol now next to the 500, which means that this will synchronize at that. So with that, we'll give that a go. OK, so that's starting to get there now. It's brought the image up a little. This is what we had before, and this is what we've got now. But I think it needs to uh, just come up a bit more. So what I'll do is just add another uh, stop to the energy in the flash, which I can do from the control on the camera here. And we'll just see what that looks like. Yes, that seems to have done the trick. So this is what we had before. And this is what we've got now. OK, so by using a small amount of fill-in flash, I've been able to light the foreground here uh, correctly, whilst at the same time taking the background down due to the high shutter speed that I was using. OK, so for capturing the image, that's it. So the next stage is just to go into Photoshop and do the bare minimum of post-production. So here we are in Photoshop, and I've selected the last image that we captured outside. So the first thing I'm going to do is just make a copy of this so that I can leave the camera original alone and just edit the copy. So the way I'm going to do that is just go onto the background here, right click the mouse, ask for a duplicate layer, but ask for a new document. And we'll just call this Flowers. OK, so Photoshop has made me a new document, called it Flowers, put it at the top here. So I can now just shut down the camera original. I've always got that to go back to. OK, so just having a look around the image here, I think one of the first things I'll do is just zoom all the way into 100%, like so, and just use the space bar so that I can pan around the image a little. We'll have a little look. Yeah, that's the main flower that I wanted, and that's all in focus, which is good. Excellent. So just zoom out again. Right, so what do I need to do to this image? Well, not very much, I think. Um, the idea of separating the subject from the background seems to have worked very well. We've got just enough illumination on the background to make it interesting. I think I will just add an adjustment layer, and I'm just going to add a levels adjustment. And I'm just going to make the dark parts just a tiny bit darker can see how sensitive this control is. So just take it down just a tiny little bit, just something like that. But I think more or less the camera original was pretty good to start with. Right, so with that little adjustment made, I think the next thing would be to look at a crop. So just using the cropping tool, I'm using this for video, so I'm using a specific ratio this time of 16 by 9. 
and I'm just going to bring the edges in just to tidy up the composition a little. There we are. Maybe a little tighter. There, I don't want to do too much to it. Yeah, that looks okay. Just click on the commit button. And there we have it. So by applying a couple of little techniques, the aperture to control the amount of out of focus in the background and the mix of fill flash and daylight to light the foreground and yet keep the background dark, I've managed to transform the original scene into something a little more pleasant. And I think overall that's worked rather well. OK, well I hope you liked watching how I made that image, and if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other images as they appear, and don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching.